how do you keep your faith when you're praying for your family members that are far from God? You want to answer that and then I'll answer it? Yes. You know, find your promise. That's the first thing that I could tell you. Find a promise for your family. And one of the promises is, as for me and my house, they will serve the mm. Lord. Whether they are physically in your house or not, That it's, it's not even an issue. When the Word of God says, as for you and your house, they will serve the Lord, and you stand on it, mm. and you take that promise, and you pray the Word, because that's the one thing that the enemy is so afraid of. That's the one thing that he has to back off, and eventually... They will come to the Lord. Well, I think we have all these scriptures we're going to quote. Yes. And I want to get the, these over to you. So make sure you subscribe and, and then we'll send your email and everything. And we'll send you uh, all these scriptures. But l l this is heavy. So she's talking about praying for our family members that are far from God. And here, when did you get this scripture? Because it says, one? all your children shall be taught by the Lord. Yes. And great will be the peace of your children. In righteousness you will be established. You shall be far from oppression. Yes. For you will not fear and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Now, when did you get that? And what did our family look like when we got that? And because this is what Deja is asking, you know, when they're not, when they're far from God, what is, what did that look and feel like for you? And how did that scripture come about? That scripture actually was the first scripture that um, God gave us, the Holy Spirit. That was the mm. first one. But it just didn't come to us. We had to search the scriptures and we would pray, give us, give us a rhema word for mm -hmm. our children. And that was the first scripture that the Holy Spirit gave us. And so we just stood on it. Man. Okay. So this is going to get really good. I can feel yeah. it. Okay. Here's another scripture. Your sons and daughters shall come back home from distant lands and be at your side. When did you get that one? Like, explain that one. That one, that one, you know, I'm not, it probably, sometimes within days, sometimes within weeks, the Holy Spirit would just start giving a scripture. And you would write them down. And we would write them down. Yes, Dad and I would write them down, and then we would pray them every, twice a day. Well, okay, first thing in the somebody's morning. listening intently. Yes. Tell them how you did it. And the first thing in the morning, we would pray the scripture. Last thing we did before we went to bed at night, we would speak that scripture. So I would be in my room in the morning. Yes. I hadn't slept all night, tweaking all night on drugs. And then I would feel, and I would see it. I would see like a smoke come from under the door. And it was, I know it was the presence of God. Yes. And I knew if that, that smoke touches me, it's going to weaken me. So I would jump out the window. Is that when you were speaking the word? Yes. That's what we were doing. We were so speaking in the, the spirit word. world, you can't see it working. No. Nope. But the scripture says the word of God doesn't return back void. It will always accomplish. Yes. Again, that's here too. It will always accomplish what you send it to do. What you send it so to God do. says it, but you had to say it. Yes. Okay. Now and there's one scripture. Go ahead. That's one scripture that says, um, depart, depart. Leave those things that are unclean to you. For I have gone before you, and I have prepared the way, and I am your rear guard. And we used to pray that too, all the time. That that you would, you, your Is brother, that your here? sister, yes. Okay, we'll find it, but so go ahead. You, go ahead. your brother, and your sister would depart oh, from, man. from those man. things that were man. keeping you in bondage. Okay, okay, so we only have 30 minutes, so because yes. it's lunch. But we're going to have to do it again. I can feel it already. Yes. Um, but here's a question, and I'm going to answer it, and you can answer it, but... Um, let me ask you one more scripture and then yes. we'll kind of go from there. He, Genesis 17, 7, he shall be God to them. I'm sure you're thinking Jason, yes. uh, Tamar, Raymond in their generation. Yes. When I, I always hear you quote that. I want to hear the story behind that one. Because we would put your names in it and individually we would say, you know, Jason, and then we'd say it again tomorrow. That God shall be to him. It, yes, in their generation. And at that time, it was only you children. There was no grandchildren no, there. No, no. But the Holy Spirit taught us to think generationally. Ooh, Rabbi he, Shonda. He did. He taught us to think generationally. And he put it deep in our hearts. I'm getting a word right now. As as when you're praying for your child, you're praying for generations. You're praying that they're going to affect generations mm. far after you're gone. Come on. Generations still need God. And you're covering them and you're standing Whoa, and you're believing. Wow. 
That would be grandma. The great, your great grandmother. And oh, I don't never met her. Yeah. She was a prayer, woman of prayer. She was a woman of prayer. My grandma was a woman of prayer. She came because her mother prayed her. And in. you came because grandma prayed. And then you came oh. because I prayed. And then you guys prayed for your children. And then now we've got the great. Because I should have been dead like a oh. hundred times. Yes. Wow, but yes. prayer. Prayer, no. and the, not just prayer, but prayer in the Word. That's what builds faith. Tell us, tell them what the pastor told you if you have a problem. The pastor would always say, if you have a problem, find the promise. Well, I remember the first time we heard it, Dad and I looked at each other. He said, we got three issues here, and we, we need to get busy. <laughs> three issues. What were the three issues, Mom? Yeah, it was you. Jason, Tamar, and Raymond. <laughs> you were addicted to meth, and you were a drug addict. And I, we didn't even know to the extreme of God kind of kept us hidden a little bit yeah, so yeah. That we would know the extreme. It was crazy. Your yeah. sister was a meth addict, a functioning meth addict. Your brother was a crack addict, and all three of you were alcoholics. Okay, so it's pretty bad. Okay, I want to talk about breakthrough, but before yes. we go into that, because we're really talking about faith. Yes. Now, when it comes to faith, the, the same way you believe for us, Anything you need from God comes the same way. Anything. Healing, provision. Everything. I mean, I've seen God take care of you, Mom. It's amazing. You and Dad, even garage sales, remember? And God would, yes. you were the only garage yes. sale on the block that would sell because you tied. Yes. Maybe we can get to that another time. But faith is peace, trust. Yes. But faith is confidence. So yes. how did you have confidence in the word um, and deal with guilt or or, or condemnation from maybe the past. Okay. Because, I'm sorry, because Stephanie Torres is saying, how do I make my older children understand that I can't take back the past? And I'm thinking that's mainly dealing with guilt. Because because if there's any guilt, then then faith is, is, is gone. Yes. Faith cannot work in a condemned heart. But God says, old things are passed away, all things have become new. Okay, how did you do that? Because you obviously got bold. Yes. I mean, Remember that one time you told me, <laughs> I, got, I go to you, I go, I go, mom, you know, like I tried to do the whole manipulation, yeah. like you weren't there and all You this. were a good manipulator. Yeah. You were the youngest one and you were probably the best yeah. one. Yeah. I was like, mom, you, you didn't do this and you did that. Eh. And then one day, and you were sincere, and you looked at me and said, me, you go, mijo, I love you. But uh, <laughs> you go, you go, you need to get over it. Because I did. Yeah. And you weren't like sarcastic. It was sincere, yeah. and yeah. I knew, like my little game was over. Okay. I think it was two weeks later. I got everything. Everything went crazy, yeah. and I got to say, "Mom, tell us how to deal with that old devil of shame and guilt." Because somebody's watching, mom or dad. Well, and you know, they're they're dealing with that right now. Yeah. Well, you know what? What we did at the church that we were going to, we got into Bible college right away. Brilliant. We didn't have a lifestyle of freedom at that church, mm. and I'll tell you what. If you want things changed and you're able to come to Lifestyle of Freedom, come. Because we went to Bible college mm. and it began to change the way we thought, the way... Yeah, you guys changed. Spoke. You oh, and Dad were drastically, like... Drastically. Like... Drastically. Like our party was over. Yeah. <laughs> but because... You guys started walking yes, that power. Yeah. We were in a Word Faith church, in word. a Word Faith Bible college, and... It, you know, God just started changing the way we thought. Because some people say, what is the word faith? It's basically a church that really emphasizes yes. how to walk by, by faith. Because you have to learn that, right? Yes, you have to learn it. You it don't just, happen. It, and it's a, it's, a, it's, it, it's a lifestyle, right? It's a but lifestyle. But part of that, walking by faith, mom, is letting go of for, uh, shame, yes. guilt, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. You had to forgive us probably, what, every day. You're like looking at me, probably thinking, I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him. Well, well, God told me, God told me, you're not going to win them over unless you walk in love. And I said, but Lord, do you see what they're doing? And God said, you're not going to win them over unless you walk in love. I see everything. But in order for me to answer what you're believing for, you have to walk in love. You're not going to win them over. Unless you walk in love. That's a tweet of the day. 
Yeah. That's the you tweet won't. of the hour. That's the tweet of the century. And they're you're not going to win yeah. them over. Yeah. Unless you're walking in love and forgiveness. That's a rhema. Yeah. It, it won't happen. And you have to forgive a lot of people. Not oh, just us. Oh. I mean. You, the list was long. Just take a moment and tell them, Mom. People want to hear it. Well. They love you. I love you. I had I was in a, an extremely abusive relationship for 13 years. Well, yeah, we all were. And I brought my kids into a situation that they didn't ask to be in. Mm -hmm. So after I got saved, I carried that for for a number of years. And all of a sudden, because we were positioned in our church and because we're positioned to learn the word of God, wow, God mom. began to heal and God began to restore. And that's when I was able to tell you that. But did it happen overnight? No, it did not happen overnight. And I know that some parents um, like this question, Man. you know, um, how do I deal with the shame? How do yeah. I deal with the the, wow. the guilt. How do I deal with the condemnation that the enemy is always trying to put on me? Well, you know, you have to be in the Word. You have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Once you get that relationship with the Holy Spirit, everything changes. You, once you take the time to be in the presence of God and you and He washes you and He washes the guilt and He washes the shame and He washes the condemnation, the grave then clothes. peace, the grave clothes. Yes. The grave clothes. And He gives you dignity for your shame. The grave clothes, like when Lazarus came out of the dead from the dead. Yes. He said, take off the grave clothes. Take off the God grave clothes. God did the clothes. miracle. God raised them. Yes. God did all that. But when it yes. came to take off the grave clothes... Yes. Uh, they had to do their so part. So it wasn't just my sin that I was dealing with. It was the shame of bringing you kids into a situation that you didn't ask to be in. And which, like, basically ruined our lives. Basically, yeah, it did. And, and, and because it ruined our lives... I would throw that up. Hey, this ruined my life because of this guy. Yeah. Because, and then, but but what God did, because you were willing to let it go, you let it go, then I was forced to make a change. Yes. Then I had to let it, eventually let it go. Yes. And you let it go. I let it go by faith. Tamar had to let it go. We all have let it go. And now God has taken what the enemy meant for yes. evil, mom. Yes. Turning it around for the good. And here we are in front of potentially millions of people. We're going to go on Daystar Live with this same testimony. The book's coming out, changing millions of lives, potentially. And But none of that would have happened unless you decided, by God's grace, I'm not going to live in shame anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to live in condemnation. I'm not going to let the devil. And God said, okay, I'm going to take that, and now I can move. I can use your faith, right. and now I'm going to turn this all around right. as a testimony. Right. Now, and it was the grace of God. Grace. It's the grace of, and let me tell you something for your children or a loved one. There's a grace that comes on it because they're going to start acting crazy. Things are going to start shifting and you're thinking, oh, wow, there's, you know, things are going to get for the better. That's not always true, but there's a grace yeah, let's that get, settles it. You want to get into that? Because that, that's another thing. But I wanted to, let's finish this. Some of your giving. Yes. Thank you so much. All your sowing and giving. It's a blessing. Thank you so much. It allows us to keep doing what we're doing. Just it's a blessing, you know. Yes, Mom. Um, I want you to look in that camera before we go any further, and I want you to talk to some mom or dad, or or son or daughter. Yes, that's dealing with condemnation right now, and, and we can't talk about faith until yeah. we deal with that right now. Yeah, and you know, God said, "I didn't con come to condemn the world. I didn't come to condemn the world. The world it's already condemned." But I came to set you free. I came to forgive you so that you don't have to walk in shame, so that you don't have to walk in condemnation, so that you don't have to live a life of confusion. And that's what wow. salvation does. Salvation, mm. Jesus comes in, and then you walk, you, you walk with God. You walk that thing out. And before you know, I remember I used to deal with depression real, real bad. And, and you kids didn't know it, but I dealt with depression because of the situation. And one day after, it was a, maybe a year, two years after I got saved. It was a time. And all of a sudden, one day I go, oh, my God, it's gone. Wow. It's gone. I didn't even know when it had left. Wow. I didn't even know when it had left. And all of a sudden I go, my God, this thing is gone. 
And I, I mean, I jumped up. I started dancing like the a crazy woman in my, in my living room. Because. <laughs> With dad's ugly chair. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. I, was, I just thought about that because that, that old ugly chair had to go. That old ugly Every shame and guilt. Had to go. Gotta go. It had to go. Wow. It had wow. to go. Man, yeah. mom. Okay. Yeah. Somebody's getting a break. I can feel it right now. Yeah. yeah. Man, just. Man, you let it go. You praise God. The joy of the Lord's coming to your the house. The Lord is your strength. Shanda Rabakaya. That's your strength. Should have bought a Honda. Yeah. And Man. you can have joy. You can. You can have joy. Unspeakable. God's unspeakable and joy. Full of the glory of God. Full of the glory of God. To where you will fulfill your destiny, whatever God has called you for. Not only that, he's called you to believe for the generations. Okay. I'm a strong believer in that. All right, I know. But to me, we you, you're, you're at the generations, yes. but we got to get there. Yes. So, you know what I mean? Like, we're going yes. to get there. Maybe not today, but we're going to get there. Because you're functioning at the next level now. We're like, they're saved now. What's next? So, but we got to get them saved. Yes. So, again, Stephanie, that was an amazing question. How do I make my older children understand that I can't take back the past? You got to you gotta forgive yourself. You yes. got to be willing to let it go. And walk it out, and eventually, I believe God, it'll all work itself out. You can't force it. My mom never forced it on us. But just one time, I know that was the Lord that had you say it, and you pray, Steph, that moment happens where you could say, I love you, but I'm, that's it. No more manipulation here. And let me say one more thing. Okay. When you're going to speak to your children, and the Holy Spirit taught us that early on, you wait for that window of opportunity that God gives. And once that window oh, opens, yeah. once that window opens, their heart is receptive. Like a running back. Yes. Hit the hole. And the Boom. words come out from you, from your spirit, man, mm. and your kids are ready to hear it. Mm. So you wait for that and you pray for that. Lord, open that window. We used to pray all the time. Open that window. I pray that all the time. That yeah. For all different situations. Yeah, for any situation. And, and, and it's you yes. can see that window opening. You can see it. And I just got this word from God. Yes. Somebody said, well, pastor, I, I don't know what to say. Don't worry about what to say. Exactly. What does the Bible say? In that hour, yes, he will give you the words it's true. to say. It's true. Open your mouth and I'll feel it, says the Lord. Well, when I told Ooh, you the that, mornings here. when Shut. I told you that, I knew that the window had opened. And Because I was thinking about the Carmen concert too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's That's talk about another... breakthrough now. Okay. All right. Keep, keep sending questions. Uh, keep sewing. Thank you. And let somebody know about this because somebody needs to hear this today. I know Mother's Day is coming up. Yes. This is big. All right. And you know what, Mom? I just felt this. The women's conference coming up. Somebody needs to sew uh, some tickets. Like get oh. some tickets and give them to some mom. Yes. Because uh, we're going to share a little bit about this at the women's conference. Because what we spoke about last night, what's at the end of that ticket? The ticket is just a piece of paper. But there's a soul attached Ooh, to it. The women's conference. Is there's a be, soul attached. It's to It's gonna that. be the best one I've ever had. Somebody that's gonna walk free, free from shame, oh, free from man. guilt, free from condemnation. Leave that water pot. Leave that water pot. Man. Yes, okay, exactly. mom. All right. Great questions. Okay. So, how do you? No, let me go this one. How do you know? This is by Darcel Harris. How? Oh, this is gonna be a heavy one, mom. I mean, this might take us. This we only have eight minutes. This, that's gonna this, take this, okay. us another time. You ready? Yeah. How do you know you're in the process of breakthrough? I have to laugh because you know. <laughs> okay. I want to go to the scripture. And you even circled it. Yeah. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And then it says, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. That's right. Talk about and the breakthrough and the warfare. Understand that there's an enemy that does not want your children to have breakthrough. He's but afraid of your under, children, understand but he is. That. The yes. devil's afraid of your children. Yes. And your grandchildren. Yes. And great grandchildren. Lord, yeah. I, I feel the anointing so strong. And you know, when mom. we were praying for, God, for, for our God. children, we were praying for. <sighs> um, right now, I'm talking specifically about Pastor Jason. My God, Did we anointing. know? That there was going to be a freedom. Did we know that we'd be doing a podcast with you? Lord Absolutely not. Lord we knew he was mercy. called to ministry, but we didn't know how far it was. But you know what? God knew. God knew. And before, he knew what he had how planned. did you? Bible says you have here. 
I'll keep you in perfect peace when your mind stayed on. Because yes. I always preach this. All over the world I preach this. Before the devil comes out, he convulses. He, absolutely. And he was convulsing. Tell us, tell him and what happened. Tell, no, tell him about winning. everything. Yes. Somebody needs to hear the raid. and. Yeah, that's how you know you're winning. At 6 in the morning, that, the cops You want a up. sign? That's the tell sign. Tell him, though. Somebody needs to hear the testimony. Well, Just the bad woman. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to start with, with one point first. Okay. Um, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, and um, I heard talking and i'm like what is this and i got up and there you were and then there was this other man white man with the long hair long ponytail and then there's the other guy really mean looking buff guy and i looked at them and i said i know what you're doing here and the holy spirit didn't allow me to say what and i didn't understand mm. it but i have the license plates and if you don't leave now i'm going to call the police well all y'all ran you ran out of the house. Next day, I hear you and your sister talking. And she goes, Alex, don't mom, talk, don't oh, mom names, talked yeah. to him like that? Mom said that? And you, yeah, mom said that. Well, I still didn't know what we were talking about. So maybe about, I don't know, I don't, I can't, don't remember the exact time frame, but it wasn't long. Mm. Um, me and dad are in the room. And we were watching, a, you know, probably Hagen or Keith yeah. Moore or somebody on TV. And I hear your sister start screaming. Well, all of a sudden, before we knew it, they did a raid on our house. They came through the door and we had an iron door. They ripped it out. And they came through the door and they wanted to know where Jason Lozano was. Well, first of all, they said, all, all of you on the floor and they had guns to our heads. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what is going on? Wow. And they're they're tearing the house up because they're looking for the drugs. They're they're just destroying Man. the house because they're looking for the drugs. They couldn't find any. Then they asked where you were. Well, you were already in jail and we told them, you know what, you already have him. Did you not check that he you already have him? He's in jail. And that even made him upset. Well, one of the police officers was one of the undercover cops that I told to leave that day. Did not even know it, but God knew. God and they knew. They said I had sold drugs to them and all that stuff. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so. And so here we are. You know why it hit me right now? Because they what? said, where's Jason Lozano? And I yeah. thought, now my name is not mentioned. Um, thank God for your prayer, Ma. Powerful. How do you know you're in the process of breakthrough? Yeah, all it. hell may break loose. All hell may break loose. And, and you and can't let go. You can't. You got to hold your peace. You got to hold your promise. I'm crying. You know, dad's looking at me and I'm crying. And finally they let us sit up and we sat down. My And God. we looked at each other at the same exact time. And we said, you know what God says? All our children will be taught by the Lord. There it is. And great shall be the, the peace. What? The peace of our children. And the Bible says in righteousness they shall walk. It's all here. And something broke. We knew it's that here. day something broke. Something, Satan had to give it up. He had no choice that day. It, I think that was his final hit. And th th these people aren't going to, these people aren't going to bend. And I mean, I'm crying, you yeah, know, you, my natural. You can have fear yeah. or on yeah. the outside, but you have faith in your heart. Yes. And you're confessing the word. And I think that was his final blow. And, and. Yeah, because right after that. Right after that, you all And then I was saved. in jail, and then God spoke to me in jail yeah. about the raid. Right. Which is weird. Wow. Which just makes no sense, but it's the grace of God. And then I get let out. I don't even know how. And then next thing I know, I'm home, and I'm feeling really guilty about all the raid. And yeah. there was actually two raids. Remember yeah. the first one, the DA came, and they took yeah. me? On the embezzlement charges. Yeah, and then, what was it, a couple days later? Or a week later? Yeah, it was a little time Two weeks? Later. I was in jail for yeah. a little bit, huh? Okay. In jail for and a then, bit. maybe two weeks later. Yeah, probably about two and weeks. And then, it was like all in like a two-week period. Like, And then I get out, and then right after that, uh, you invite me to the concert. And I say, Mom, let's, let's get to the testimony. The testimony. Okay, we go to the concert. We go to the I asked you. I go, and I, I took a bunch of hits of acid. Cause I, and I said, is there going to be a lot of lights? And you said, yes. 
And the next I said, yeah, a lot of lights, a lot of music, a lot of dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, that, that, but you didn't lie. I didn't lie. But that's that moment. I didn't lie. That's that moment. Like a running lie. back hits the hole. That's the moment. Yeah. A point guard hits the lane. Yeah. That's that moment. You're boom. And then God gave you the word. You didn't yeah. lie. I didn't and, lie. Uh, but in my flesh and mind, I'm like, oh, it's party time. Yeah. And I took a bunch of hits of acid. And we went. And, and there was lights, dancing, music. I, but you didn't lively. tell me it was a preacher. No. And it was Brother Carmen, rest in peace. And yeah. I ran and I, man, how did it feel like when I, man. Before they even finished the altar call, you were already running up. How did it feel? I, I, I'm like, God, you are faithful to your word. You are faithful to your I word. I was the first of the dominoes. You were, and then about four months later, your brother got saved. And then about maybe not even five months later, your sister got it saved. It was a domino. It was like a domino effect. How do you know the break when the breakthrough's coming? All hell breaks loose. But it one, sure one, does. The first one comes down. The rest. Oh, my the God, The rest Mom. come. Okay. I can hardly breathe. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mom. We have more scriptures. We want to send this. Make sure you subscribe. Click. Uh, we get these two. Send us your email so we could send you these scriptures. Maybe we'll put them together in some kind of format. This is definitely yes. going to be a book, Mom. Yes. We're going to have to do a curriculum. Yes. Uh, we'll build this out. Um, and, you know, we're going to be doing some a partner thing, too, for people who want to partner. And we'll be doing books like this, putting books like this together, put resources. Mm -hmm. And thank you again for giving. Thank you for helping and sponsoring. So we can do this. We, I want to put all this podcast and these kind of things we yes. have into book form yes. so people can do what you did and, and stand, and you and dad and stand. But I'm going to do one more but thing. But you know Mom. what, son? If they're near here, 45 minutes out, an hour out, yeah, get, get, to, to yeah, get to Lifestyle of Freedom. Get to Lifestyle of Freedom. Get that Even if you go to another gonna, church, at least come to Lifestyle. You're going to win. Yeah, yeah, it's a win, yeah, win yeah, yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. If you're young and you're struggling, get to Lifestyle of Freedom. If you're a parent believing for your child, get to Lifestyle. It's a win, win situation. And if they're far out, we actually offer it yes, online. It's we actually offer online. So, um, so there's no excuse. What, give me your one scripture because um, Felipe Navarro said, what scripture should I stand on when believing for my children? So what's, give me what your favorite, Mom. Again, all my children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall I, be their we got, peace. We're out of time, Mom. And in righteousness they shall we got walk. 30 seconds. Talk to somebody right now, Mom, that's believing God for their children. Or maybe somebody's even watching that's far from God. There's, Talk to them right now, Mom. Yes. Start searching for a promise. That's the first thing. Once you find your promise, you build your faith. Your promise will build your faith. I, I, I promise you that your promise, you know what God says that he places his word above his very own name. Mm. That's how confident God is. And you know what? It's not going to turn, it's not going to return void. It's going to accomplish all that God intended to, because you're speaking the word, you're praying the word, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith. And not only is it going to bring your loved ones to the Lord, you're getting built up in your faith and you're getting stronger in your faith. And we believe it. Yes. And what the devil meant for evil, look at this. That's God's going to turn it. And God doesn't love us any more than he loves you and your yes. family. And if God did it for our family, he can do it for he's going to do it for your family. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great will be the peace of those children. And in righteousness they shall be established. Look, I'm quoting the very word she spoke, because the yes. word doesn't return back void. God has no respect or person, but he does respect faith. Yes. Believe God, trust God. Above all, learn to walk in love and by faith, and the promise of God is going to come to pass. And that Pharaoh, come on, Mom, is going to have to let, let your, your children, children, let my children, children go. Come on, somebody. For generations. For generations. Subscribe, yes. like. Thank you for your generosity. We'll see you again yes. next Thursday.